Hello everyone. Today I'm working on this uh, Backman Spectrum uh, SD40. So this is actually a very good runner. You don't hear too much about it because um, I don't run it that often because the the hood here it's a little bit too wide. See now if I put another engine next to it, uh, it becomes obvious. That being said, uh, it's a really good runner. It's missing the two screws that hold it uh, to the frame. And it's also missing the circuit board that does the lights. So without lights, it's a little bit boring. 5937, there happens to be lots of picture of this engine. It's been photographed a lot. And it's a snout engine, so that's kind of neat. So that's a little bit wrong. The, the nose should be just a little bit longer. Um, while I was doing my police car, I thought to myself, wouldn't it be cool to, to repair this engine because it doesn't have any circuit board to repair this and put some uh, flashing um, ditch lights to the front. So uh, as you see, on the picture the uh, the headlights of this engine are on the hood and there's a bell here built between the number boards also the ditch lights are low on the pilot beam so um, it's good to have a picture to get the exact placement of it we're also going to do a uh, light for the back here. I'm pretty sure I want to do that. Um, so I have to mate my lights to the frame somehow. That's going to require a little bit of thinking. Now the challenge is going to be mating this to this somehow. I'm not too sure how I'm going to do that. That's what I got to work on. So I took a little bit of time to think about it and I came up with two uh, solutions. First of all, if I had an engine that was DCC compatible and had a printed circuit board like that, I could probably poke a couple of holes on there and solder it to uh, the printed circuit board. So that would work, uh, although I would have to make sure there's enough room for this circuit there. So it's a little bit big. So that could be a problem. Or I can try to make my own circuit board using uh, this old uh, tin can. I think the bottom here is uh, pretty thin. I could probably cut that pretty easily. Sometimes also I'll use the tops of these as a source for extra plastic. So this is nicely recyclable. Lots of possibilities. So I cut out the bottom of uh, the can using my regular can opener. And then I'm using some really high quality scissors, but then I can make two halves of a circuit board, one for each side of the track. That should allow me to build some kind of a, a circuit board for this engine. So this will allow me to make a, a fake circuit board until I can maybe figure out something better. So the Batman circuit board used to have two tabs that would go down like this and they have a little bit of a springy action so they would sit between the body and the frame and contact the frame this way bringing electricity to uh, the circuit board so I'm just copying that design we're experimenting together today so that should work. Yeah, be careful with these, the ends are very sharp. I mean, I could use some sandpaper 
to alleviate that, but I don't think I'm going to be doing that today. So that should be my two halves of the circuit board. So here's my very, very crude uh, circuit board. So I've got to fit that between the shell and the body. I put uh, four places for wires because I'm going to put a headlight and a backup light. Incidentally, because these are LEDs, they will automatically make uh, directional lighting. So I'm going to prepare a headlight and a backup light. So because I don't want the, the headlight to blink, I'm going to tear apart the circuit board for you so you can see uh, what's inside. So once again, I'm not very knowledgeable in electronics. I just know some very, very basic stuff. So here's what they did. They put a bigger LED, which is a flashing thing, and they put a resistor. I'm keeping the resistor. You need that with your LED, but this part I'm going to remove completely. And maybe also this connector is going to have to go. Now, I don't really know uh, how to calculate the resistance. If anybody watching this knows how to do it, I know these bands, they mean something. But I don't know what value this is. Anyways, uh, I'm keeping this in my circuit. Now I've got my headlight and my two flashing ditch lights. Now I have everything plugged in. I've got my two uh, flashing lights for the ditch lights. I got the forward light. You can see the backward light. I put it the reverse polarity. So this will give me directional lighting at the same time. And I got my two resistors. I put them on the red side. I don't know if it really makes a difference which side you put them on. I put some tape on my circuit board there just to help it maintain a proper distance. And I also, I'm also using a piece of a rubber band just to hold it there so I can do some testing on the track. I am not super knowledgeable in electronics. I don't even know if the track voltage is going to be too much or too little. So that's looking okay uh, so far. I'm going to try uh, reversing it. So my reverse light is working. It's very bright. Uh, I think that's good. I'm having a little problem here. When I test my circuit on the bench, the lights flash, uh, no problem. When I uh, put it on the engine, it stops flashing. So I'm not too sure what to do about that. I'm gonna keep uh, assembling it and uh, we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna keep the wiring definitely from interfering with the drive. So I could have the headlight behind here but as you know, um, 5937 had a bell here and the headlight was low. Also the ditch light were below the pilot beam. I'm going to put it up here just for simplification. So I have to drill holes uh, in the front there and then two holes for the headlights. For the back, it's the same, so that's going to be easy. If you don't have a micro drill like this, uh, I urge you to get one. I use it for a million projects. Now I've made some holes for my headlight on the nose. And I made holes for my ditch lights to go through and they won't interfere with the drive system. 
So now all I got to do is stick them through my holes. So I'm using small pieces of masking tape just to ensure that my lights stay put as I reinstall my shell. I've even got uh, my backup light set up properly. So there, that's all set. So now I finish putting my shell back on and now it's time to run some trains. So if anyone knows why my uh, ditch lights were flashing on the bench, but I couldn't get them to flash when I coupled them to the drive system, please let me know in the comments below. I did uh, get something good out of it. I've got the headlight at the proper place for that particular engine, and I did get some ditch lights. So that's going to lead to new projects uh, where I'm going to put ditch lights on older engines. I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly had fun making it for you. See you soon.